Artificial Neural Networks or Connectionist Systems are computing systems vaguely inspired by the biological neural networks that constitute animal brains. The neural network itself is not an algorithm, but rather a framework for many different machine learning algorithms to work together and process complex data inputs. Such systems learn to perform tasks by considering examples, generally without being programmed with any task-specific rules. For example, in image recognition, they might learn to identify images that contain cats by analyzing example images that have been manually labeled as cat or no cat and using the results to identify cats in other images. They do this without any prior knowledge about cats, for example, that they have fur, tails, whiskers and cat-like faces. Instead, they automatically generate identifying characteristics from the learning material that they process. An AN is based on a collection of connected units or nodes called artificial neurons, which loosely model the neurons in a biological brain. Each connection, like the synapses in a biological brain, can transmit a signal from one artificial neuron to another. An artificial neuron that receives a signal can process it and then signal additional artificial neurons connected to it. In common AN implementations, the signal at a connection between artificial neurons is a real number, and the output of each artificial neuron is computed by some nonlinear function of the sum of its inputs. The connections between artificial neurons are called edges. Artificial neurons and edges typically have a weight that adjusts as learning proceeds. The weight increases or decreases the strength of the signal at a connection. Artificial neurons may have a threshold such that the signal is only sent if the aggregate signal crosses that threshold. Typically, artificial neurons are aggregated into layers. Different layers may perform different kinds of transformations on their inputs. Signals travel from the first layer, the input layer, to the last layer, the output layer, possibly after traversing the layers multiple times. The original goal of the AN approach was to solve problems in the same way that a human brain would. However, over time, attention moved to performing specific tasks, leading to deviations from biology. Artificial neural networks have been used on a variety of tasks, including computer vision, speech recognition, machine translation, social network filtering, playing board and video games and medical diagnosis. History Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts 1943 created a computational model for neural networks based on mathematics and algorithms called threshold logic. This model paved the way for neural network research to split into two approaches. One approach focused on biological processes in the brain while the other focused on the application of neural networks to artificial intelligence. This work led to work on nerve networks and their link to finite automata. <laughs> Hebbian learning In the late 1940s, D. O. Hebb created a learning hypothesis based on the mechanism of neural plasticity that became known as Hebbian learning. Hebbian learning is unsupervised learning. This evolved into models for long-term potentiation. Researchers started applying these ideas to computational models in 1948 with Turing's B-type machines. 
Farley and Clark 1954 first used computational machines, then called calculators, to simulate a Hebbian network. Other neural network computational machines were created by Rochester, Holland, Habit and Duda 1956. Rosenblatt 1958 created the perceptron, an algorithm for pattern recognition. With mathematical notation, Rosenblatt described circuitry not in the basic perceptron, such as the exclusive or circuit that could not be processed by neural networks at the time. In 1959, a biological model proposed by Nobel laureates Hubel and Wiesel was based on their discovery of two types of cells in the primary visual cortex, simple cells and complex cells. The first functional networks with many layers were published by Ivoknenko and Lapa in 1965, becoming the group method of data handling. Neural network research stagnated after machine learning research by Minsky and Papert, 1969, who discovered two key issues with the computational machines that processed neural networks. The first was that basic perceptrons were incapable of processing the exclusive or circuit. The second was that computers didn't have enough processing power to effectively handle the work required by large neural networks. Neural network research slowed until computers achieved far greater processing power. Much of artificial intelligence had focused on high-level symbolic models that are processed by using algorithms, characterized for example by expert systems with knowledge embodied in if-then rules, until in the late 1980s research expanded to low-level sub-symbolic machine learning, characterized by knowledge embodied in the parameters of a cognitive model. Topic. Backpropagation A key trigger for renewed interest in neural networks and learning was Werbos's 1975 backpropagation algorithm that effectively solved the exclusive or problem by making the training of multi-layer networks feasible and efficient. Backpropagation distributed the error term back up through the layers, by modifying the weights at each node. In the mid 1980s, parallel distributed processing became popular under the name connectionism. Rummel Hart and McClelland 1986 described the use of connectionism to simulate neural processes, support vector machines and other, much simpler methods such as linear classifiers gradually overtook neural networks in machine learning popularity. However, using neural networks transformed some domains, such as the prediction of protein structures. In 1992, max pooling was introduced to help with least shift invariance and tolerance to deformation to aid in 3D object recognition. In 2010, backpropagation training through max pooling was accelerated by GPUs and shown to perform better than other pooling variants. The vanishing gradient problem affects many layered feedforward networks that used backpropagation and also recurrent neural networks (RNNs). As errors propagate from layer to layer, they shrink exponentially with the number of layers, impeding the tuning of neuron weights that is based on those errors, particularly affecting deep networks. To overcome this problem, Schmiduber adopted a multi-level hierarchy of networks 1992 pre-trained one level at a time by unsupervised learning and fine-tuned by backpropagation. Benke 2003 relied only on the sign of the gradient RPROP on problems such as image reconstruction and face localization. 
Hinton et al. 2006 proposed learning a high-level representation using successive layers of binary or real-valued latent variables with a restricted Boltzmann machine to model each layer. Once sufficiently many layers have been learned, the deep architecture may be used as a generative model by reproducing the data when sampling down the model an ancestral pass from the top-level feature activations. In 2012, Ng and Dean created a network that learned to recognize higher-level concepts, such as cats, only from watching unlabeled images taken from YouTube videos. Earlier challenges in training deep neural networks were successfully addressed with methods such as unsupervised pre-training, while available computing power increased through the use of GPUs and distributed computing. Neural networks were deployed on a large scale, particularly in image and visual recognition problems. This became known as deep learning. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Hardware-based designs. Computational devices were created in CMOS, for both biophysical simulation and neuromorphic computing. Nanodevices for very large-scale principal components analyses and convolution may create a new class of neural computing because they are fundamentally analog rather than digital even though the first implementations may use digital devices. Saresen and colleagues 2010 in Schmiduber's group showed that despite the vanishing gradient problem, GPUs make backpropagation feasible for many layered feedforward neural networks. Topic: <laughs> Contests. Between 2009 and 2012, recurrent neural networks and deep feedforward neural networks developed in Schmiduber's research group won eight international competitions in pattern recognition and machine learning. For example, the bi-directional and multi-dimensional long short-term memory LSTM of Graves et al. won three competitions in connected handwriting recognition at the 2009 International Conference on Document Analysis and Recognition ICDAR, without any prior knowledge about the three languages to be learned, Saresen and colleagues won pattern recognition contests including the IJCNN 2011 Traffic Sign Recognition Competition, the ISBI 2012 Segmentation of Neuronal Structures in Electron Microscopy Stacks Challenge and others. Their neural networks were the first pattern recognizers to achieve human competitive or even superhuman performance on benchmarks such as traffic sign recognition IJCNN 2012, or the MNIST handwritten digits problem. Researchers demonstrated 2010 that deep neural networks interfaced to a hidden Markov model with context-dependent states that define the neural network output layer can drastically reduce errors in large vocabulary speech recognition tasks such as voice search. GPU-based implementations of this approach won many pattern recognition contests, including the IJCNN 2011 Traffic Sign Recognition Competition, the ISBI 2012 Segmentation of Neuronal Structures in MStacks Challenge, the ImageNet Competition and others. Deep, highly nonlinear neural architectures similar to the neocognitron and the standard architecture of vision, inspired by simple and complex cells, were pre trained by unsupervised methods by Hinton. A team from his lab won a 2012 contest sponsored by Merck to design software to help find molecules that might identify new drugs.
Topic: <laughs> Convolutional networks. As of 2011, the state-of-the-art in deep learning feedforward networks alternated between convolutional layers and max pooling layers, topped by several fully or sparsely connected layers followed by a final classification layer. Learning is usually done without unsupervised pre-training. In the convolutional layer, there are filters that are convolved with the input. Each filter is equivalent to a weights vector that has to be trained. Such supervised deep learning methods were the first to achieve human competitive performance on certain tasks. Artificial neural networks were able to guarantee shift invariance to deal with small and large natural objects in large cluttered scenes, only when invariance extended beyond shift to all AN learned concepts, such as location, type, object class label, scale, lighting, and others. This was realized in developmental networks DNs whose embodiments are where what networks WWN1 2008 through WWN7 2013 Topic Models An artificial neural network is a network of simple elements called artificial neurons, which receive input, change their internal state activation according to that input, and produce output depending on the input and activation. An artificial neuron mimics the working of a biophysical neuron with inputs and outputs, but is not a biological neuron model. The network forms by connecting the output of certain neurons to the input of other neurons forming a directed, weighted graph. The weights as well as the functions that compute the activation can be modified by a process called learning which is governed by a learning rule. Topic: <laughs> Components of an artificial neural network. Neurons A neuron with label J display style J receiving an input P J T display style P underscore J T from predecessor neurons consists of the following components an activation a j t display style underscore j t the neuron state depending on a discrete time parameter possibly a threshold theta j Display style theta underscore j, which stays fixed unless changed by a learning function. An activation function f display style f that computes the new activation at a given time t plus one display style t plus one from a j t display style underscore j t theta j display style theta underscore j and the net input p j t Display style p underscore j t, giving rise to the relation a j t plus one equals 
F A J T P J T theta J Display style a underscore j t plus one equals f a underscore j t p underscore j t theta underscore j and an output function f o u t display style f underscore out Computing the output from the activation O J T equals F O U T A J T Display style O underscore J T equals F underscore out a underscore J T. Often the output function is simply the identity function. An input neuron has no predecessor but serves as input interface for the whole network. Similarly, an output neuron has no successor and thus serves as output interface of the whole network. Topic. Connections, weights and biases The network consists of connections, each connection transferring the output of a neuron I, display style I to the input of a neuron J, display style J. In this sense, I Display style I is the predecessor of J Display style J and J Display style J is the successor of I Display style I. Each connection is assigned a weight W I J display style W underscore I J. Sometimes a bias term is added to the total weighted sum of inputs to serve as a threshold to shift the activation function. Topic: Propagation function. The propagation function computes the input P J T display style P underscore J T to the neuron J display style J from the outputs O I T display style o underscore i t of predecessor neurons and typically has the form p j t equals i o i t w i j Display style p underscore j t equals sum underscore i o underscore i t w underscore i j. When a bias value is added with the function, the above form changes to the following: p j t equals i o I T W I J plus W zero J 
display style p underscore j t equals sum underscore i o underscore i t w underscore i j plus w underscore zero j where w zero j display style w underscore zero j is a bias. Topic: Learning rule. The learning rule is a rule or an algorithm which modifies the parameters of the neural network in order for a given input to the network to produce a favored output. This learning process typically amounts to modifying the weights and thresholds of the variables within the network. Topic: Neural networks as functions. Neural network models can be viewed as simple mathematical models defining a function f x y display style text style f x right arrow y or a distribution over x display style text style x or both x display style text style x and y display style text style y sometimes models are intimately associated with a particular learning rule a common use of the phrase an model is really the definition of a class of such functions where members of the class are obtained by varying parameters connection weights or specifics of the architecture such as the number of neurons or their connectivity Mathematically, a neuron's network function f x display style text style f x is defined as a composition of other functions g i x display style text style g underscore i x that can further be decomposed into other functions. This can be conveniently represented as a network structure, with arrows depicting the dependencies between functions. A widely used type of composition is the nonlinear weighted sum, where f x equals k i W I G I X display style text style f x equals k left sum underscore i w underscore i g underscore i x right where k display style text style k commonly referred to as the activation function, is some predefined function, such as the hyperbolic tangent or sigmoid function or softmax function or rectifier function. The important characteristic of the activation function is that it provides a smooth transition as input values change, i.e. a small change in input produces a small change in output. The following refers to a collection of functions g i display style text style g underscore i as a vector g equals g 1 g 2 g n Display style text style g equals g underscore one g underscore two l dots g underscore n. 
This figure depicts such a decomposition of f display style text style f with dependencies between variables indicated by arrows. These can be interpreted in two ways. The first view is the functional view, the input x display style text style x is transformed into a three-dimensional vector h display style text style h which is then transformed into a two-dimensional vector g display style text style g which is finally transformed into f display style text style f this view is most commonly encountered in the context of optimization the second view is the probabilistic view the random variable f equals f g display style text style f equals f g depends upon the random variable g equals g h display style text style g equals g h which depends upon h equals h x display style text style h equals h x which depends upon the random variable x display style text style x this view is most commonly encountered in the context of graphical models the two views are largely equivalent in either case for this particular architecture the components of individual layers are independent of each other e.g. the components of g display style text style g are independent of each other given their input h display style text style h this naturally enables a degree of parallelism in the implementation. Networks such as the previous one are commonly called feedforward, because their graph is a directed acyclic graph. Networks with cycles are commonly called recurrent. Such networks are commonly depicted in the manner shown at the top of the figure, where f display style text style f is shown as being dependent upon itself however an implied temporal dependence is not shown topic learning the possibility of learning has attracted the most interest in neural networks Given a specific task to solve, and a class of functions f learning means using a set of observations to find f element of f in f which solves the task in some optimal sense. This entails defining a cost function C F R display style text style C F right arrow math B R such that for the optimal solution F Display style text style f caret asterisk c f c f display style text style c f caret asterisk leq c f f 
element of f display style text style for all f in f ie no solution has a cost less than the cost of the optimal solution see mathematical optimization the cost function c display style text style c is an important concept in learning, as it is a measure of how far away a particular solution is from an optimal solution to the problem to be solved. Learning algorithms search through the solution space to find a function that has the smallest possible cost. For applications where the solution is data dependent, the cost must necessarily be a function of the observations, otherwise the model would not relate to the data. It is frequently defined as a statistic to which only approximations can be made. As a simple example, consider the problem of finding the model f display style text style f which minimizes c equals e f x minus y 2 display style text style c equals e left f x y caret 2 right for data pairs x y display style text style x y drawn from some distribution d display style text style math call d in practical situations we would only have n display style text style n samples from d display style text style math call d and thus for the above example we would only minimize c caret equals 1 n i equals 1 n f x i minus y i 2 display style text style hat c equals frac 1 n sum underscore i equals 1 caret n f x underscore i y underscore i caret 2 Thus, the cost is minimized over a sample of the data rather than the entire distribution. When n infinity display style text style n right arrow in t some form of online machine learning must be used where the cost is reduced as each new example is seen. While online machine learning is often used when d display style text style math call d is fixed, it is most useful in the case where the distribution changes slowly over time. In neural network methods, some form of online machine learning is frequently used for finite datasets. Topic. Choosing a cost function While it is possible to define an ad hoc cost function, frequently a particular cost function is used, either because it has desirable properties such as convexity, or because it arises naturally from a particular formulation of the problem e.g., in a probabilistic formulation the posterior probability of the model can be used as an inverse cost. Ultimately, the cost function depends on the task. Topic. 
Backpropagation A DNN can be discriminatively trained with the standard backpropagation algorithm. Backpropagation is a method to calculate the gradient of the loss function produces the cost associated with a given state with respect to the weights in an AN. The basics of continuous backpropagation were derived in the context of control theory by Kelly in 1960 and by Bryson in 1961, using principles of dynamic programming. In 1962, Dreyfus published a simpler derivation based only on the chain rule. Bryson and Ho described it as a multi-stage dynamic system optimization method in 1969. In 1970, Linna and Ma finally published the general method for automatic differentiation AD of discrete connected networks of nested differentiable functions. This corresponds to the modern version of backpropagation which is efficient even when the networks are sparse. In 1973, Dreyfus used backpropagation to adapt parameters of controllers in proportion to error gradients. In 1974, Werbos mentioned the possibility of applying this principle to artificial neural networks, and in 1982, he applied Linna and Maillet's AD method to neural networks in the way that is widely used today. In 1986 Rummel Hart, Hinton and Williams noted that this method can generate useful internal representations of incoming data in hidden layers of neural networks. In 1993, Juan was the first to win an international pattern recognition contest through backpropagation. The weight updates of backpropagation can be done via stochastic gradient descent using the following equation W I J T plus 1 equals W I J T minus eta C W I J plus she T Display style W underscore I J T plus one equals W underscore I J T eta FRAC partial C partial W underscore I J plus she T where eta display style eta is the learning rate C Display style C is the cost loss function and she T display style she T a stochastic term. The choice of the cost function depends on factors such as the learning type, supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement, etc., and the activation function. For example, when performing supervised learning on a multi-class classification problem, common choices for the activation function and cost function are the softmax function and cross-entropy function, respectively. The softmax function is defined as p j equals exp x J K E X P X K Display style P underscore J equals FRAC E X P X underscore J sum underscore K E X P X underscore K where P J 
display style p underscore j represents the class probability output of the unit j display style j and x j display style x underscore j and x k display style x underscore k represent the total input to units j display style j and k display style k of the same level respectively cross entropy is defined as c equals minus j d j log p j Display style C equals sum underscore J D underscore J log P underscore J where D J Display style D underscore J represents the target probability for output unit J Display style J and p j display style p underscore j is the probability output for j display style j after applying the activation function these can be used to output object bounding boxes in the form of a binary mask they are also used for multi-scale regression to increase localization precision. DNN-based regression can learn features that capture geometric information in addition to serving as a good classifier. They remove the requirement to explicitly model parts and their relations. This helps to broaden the variety of objects that can be learned. The model consists of multiple layers, each of which has a rectified linear unit as its activation function for nonlinear transformation. Some layers are convolutional, while others are fully connected. Every convolutional layer has an additional max pooling. The network is trained to minimize L2 error for predicting the mask ranging over the entire training set containing bounding boxes represented as masks. Alternatives to backpropagation include extreme learning machines, no prop networks, training without backtracking, weightless networks, and non connectionist neural networks. Topic. Learning paradigms The three major learning paradigms each correspond to a particular learning task. These are supervised learning, unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. Topic. Supervised learning Supervised learning uses a set of example pairs x y x element of x y element of y display style x y x in x y in y and the aim is to find a function f x y display style f x right arrow y in the allowed class of functions that matches the examples 
In other words, we wish to infer the mapping implied by the data. The cost function is related to the mismatch between our mapping and the data, and it implicitly contains prior knowledge about the problem domain. A commonly used cost is the mean squared error, which tries to minimize the average squared error between the network's output f x display style fx and the target value y display style y over all the example pairs minimizing this cost using gradient descent for the class of neural networks called multilayer perceptrons mlp produces the backpropagation algorithm for training neural networks Tasks that fall within the paradigm of supervised learning are pattern recognition, also known as classification, and regression, also known as function approximation. The supervised learning paradigm is also applicable to sequential data, e.g., for handwriting, speech, and gesture recognition. This can be thought of as learning with a teacher in the form of a function that provides continuous feedback on the quality of solutions obtained thus far. <laughs> Unsupervised learning In unsupervised learning, some data x is given and the cost function to be minimized, that can be any function of the data x and the network's output f the cost function is dependent on the task the model domain and any a priori assumptions the implicit properties of the model, its parameters and the observed variables. As a trivial example, consider the model f x equals a display style text style f x equals a where a display style text style a is a constant and the cost c equals e x minus f x 2 Display style text style c equals e x f x caret two. Minimizing this cost produces a value of a display style text style a that is equal to the mean of the data. The cost function can be much more complicated. Its form depends on the application, for example, in compression it could be related to the mutual information between x and f x Whereas in statistical modeling, it could be related to the posterior probability of the model given the data note that in both of those examples those quantities would be maximized rather than minimized. Tasks that fall within the paradigm of unsupervised learning are in general estimation problems. The applications include clustering, the estimation of statistical distributions, compression and filtering. Topic: Reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, data X display style text style X are usually not given but generated by an agent's interactions with the environment. 
at each point in time t display style text style t the agent performs an action y t display style text style y underscore t and the environment generates an observation x t display style text style x underscore t and an instantaneous cost c t display style text style c underscore t according to some usually unknown dynamics the aim is to discover a policy for selecting actions that minimizes some measure of a long-term cost e.g. the expected cumulative cost the environment's dynamics and the long-term cost for each policy are usually unknown, but can be estimated. More formally the environment is modeled as a Markov decision process MDP, with states S 1 S N element of S Display style text style s underscore one s underscore n in s and actions of one a m element of a display style text style a underscore one a underscore m in a with the following probability distributions the instantaneous cost distribution p c t s t display style text style p c underscore t s underscore t the observation distribution p x t s t display style text style p x underscore t s underscore t and the transition p s t plus one S T A T Display style text style P S underscore T plus one S underscore T A underscore T while a policy is defined as the conditional distribution over actions given the observations. Taken together, the two then define a Markov chain MC. The aim is to discover the policy i.e., the MC that minimizes the cost. Artificial neural networks are frequently used in reinforcement learning as part of the overall algorithm. Dynamic programming was coupled with artificial neural networks giving neurodynamic programming, by Bertsikas and Cicicles and applied to multidimensional nonlinear problems such as those involved in vehicle routing, natural resources management or medicine because of the ability of artificial neural networks to mitigate losses of accuracy even when reducing the discretization grid density for numerical numerically approximating the solution of the original control problems. Tasks that fall within the paradigm of reinforcement learning are control problems, games and other sequential decision-making tasks. Topic. Learning algorithms 
Training a neural network model essentially means selecting one model from the set of allowed models or, in a Bayesian framework, determining a distribution over the set of allowed models that minimizes the cost. Numerous algorithms are available for training neural network models, most of them can be viewed as a straightforward application of optimization theory and statistical estimation. Most employ some form of gradient descent, using backpropagation to compute the actual gradients. This is done by simply taking the derivative of the cost function with respect to the network parameters and then changing those parameters in a gradient-related direction. Backpropagation training algorithms fall into three categories. Steepest descent, with variable learning rate and momentum, resilient backpropagation, Quasi Newton, Broyden Fletcher Goldfarb Shano, One Step Secant, Levenberg Marquardt and Conjugate Gradient, Fletcher Reeves Update, Pollock Ribier Update, Powell Beale Restart, Scaled Conjugate Gradient, Evolutionary Methods, Gene Expression Programming, Simulated Annealing, Expectation Maximization, Non Parametric Methods, and Particle Swarm Optimization are other methods for training neural networks. Topic. Convergent recursive learning algorithm This is a learning method specially designed for cerebellar model articulation controller CMAC neural networks. In 2004, a recursive least squares algorithm was introduced to train CMAC neural network online. This algorithm can converge in one step and update all weights in one step with any new input data. Initially, this algorithm had computational complexity of O N3. Based on QR decomposition, this recursive learning algorithm was simplified to be oxygen mononitride. Topic Optimization The optimization algorithm repeats a two-phase cycle, propagation and weight update. When an input vector is presented to the network, it is propagated forward through the network, layer by layer, until it reaches the output layer. The output of the network is then compared to the desired output, using a loss function. The resulting error value is calculated for each of the neurons in the output layer. The error values are then propagated from the output back through the network, until each neuron has an associated error value that reflects its contribution to the original output. Backpropagation uses these error values to calculate the gradient of the loss function. In the second phase, this gradient is fed to the optimization method, which in turn uses it to update the weights, in an attempt to minimize the loss function. Topic. Algorithm Let n display style n be a neural network with e display style e connections m display style m inputs and n display style n outputs below x 1 x 2 display style x underscore 1 x underscore 2 dots will denote vectors in r m display style math b r caret m 
y 1 y 2 display style y underscore 1 y underscore 2 dots vectors in r n display style math b r caret n and w 0 w 1 w 2 display style w underscore 0 w underscore 1 w underscore 2 l dots vectors in r e display style math b r caret e these are called inputs outputs and weights respectively the neural network corresponds to a function y equals f n w x display style y equals f underscore n w x which given a weight w display style w maps an input x display style x to an output y display style y the optimization takes as input a sequence of training examples x 1 y 1 x p y p Display style x underscore one y underscore one dots x underscore p y underscore p and produces a sequence of weights w zero w one w p Display style W underscore zero W underscore one dots W underscore P starting from some initial weight W zero Display style W underscore zero usually chosen at random. These weights are computed in turn, first compute W I display style W underscore I using only X I Y I W I minus one Display style x underscore i y underscore i w underscore i one for i equals one p display style i equals one dots p. The output of the algorithm is then w p display style w underscore p giving us a new function x f n w p x display style x mapsto f underscore n w underscore p x the computation is the same in each step, hence only the case i equals one display style i equals one is described. Calculating w one display style w underscore one from 
x one y one w zero display style x underscore one y underscore one w underscore zero is done by considering a variable weight w display style w and applying gradient descent to the function w e f n w x 1 y 1 Display style W maps to E F underscore N W X underscore one Y underscore one to find a local minimum starting at W equals W zero Display style W equals W underscore zero this makes W one display style W underscore one the minimizing weight found by gradient descent. Topic Algorithm in code To implement the algorithm above, explicit formulas are required for the gradient of the function W E F N W X Y Display style W maps to E F underscore N W X Y where the function is e y y equals y minus y two display style e y y equals y y caret two. The learning algorithm can be divided into two phases, propagation and weight update. Topic. Phase 1, propagation Each propagation involves the following steps. Propagation forward through the network to generate the output values. Calculation of the cost error term. Propagation of the output activations back through the network using the training pattern target to generate the deltas the difference between the targeted and actual output values of all output and hidden neurons. Topic. Phase 2, weight update. For each weight, the following steps must be followed. The weight's output delta and input activation are multiplied to find the gradient of the weight. A ratio percentage of the weight's gradient is subtracted from the weight. This ratio percentage influences the speed and quality of learning. It is called the learning rate. The greater the ratio, the faster the neuron trains, but the lower the ratio, the more accurate the training is. The sign of the gradient of a weight indicates whether the error varies directly with, or inversely to, the weight. Therefore, the weight must be updated in the opposite direction, descending the gradient. Learning is repeated on new batches until the network performs adequately. Topic: Pseudocode. 
The following is pseudocode for a stochastic gradient descent algorithm for training a three-layer network only one hidden layer. Initialize network weights often small random values. Do for each training example named X prediction equals neural net output network X forward pass actual equals teacher output X compute error prediction actual at the output units compute Delta W H Display style delta w underscore h for all weights from hidden layer to output layer backward pass compute delta w i display style delta w underscore i for all weights from input layer to hidden layer backward pass continued Update network weights, input layer not modified by error estimate. Until all examples classified correctly or another stopping criterion satisfied. Return the network. The lines labeled backward pass can be implemented using the backpropagation algorithm, which calculates the gradient of the error of the network regarding the network's modifiable weights. Topic. Extension The choice of learning rate eta text style eta is important, since a high value can cause too strong a change, causing the minimum to be missed, while a too low learning rate slows the training unnecessarily. Optimizations such as QuickProp are primarily aimed at speeding up error minimization, other improvements mainly try to increase reliability. Topic. Adaptive learning rate In order to avoid oscillation inside the network such as alternating connection weights, and to improve the rate of convergence, refinements of this algorithm use an adaptive learning rate. Topic. Inertia By using a variable inertia term, momentum alpha text style alpha, the gradient and the last change can be weighted such that the weight adjustment additionally depends on the previous change. If the momentum alpha text style alpha is equal to zero, the change depends solely on the gradient, while a value of one will only depend on the last change. Similar to a ball rolling down a mountain, whose current speed is determined not only by the current slope of the mountain but also by its own inertia, inertia can be added, where, delta w i j, t plus 1, text style, delta w underscore i j, t plus 1, is the change in weight w i j, t plus 1, text style w underscore i j, t plus 1, in the connection of neuron i text style i to neuron j text style j at time t plus one text style t plus one eta text style eta a learning rate eta zero text style eta delta j text style delta underscore j the error signal of neuron j text style j and o i text style o underscore i the output of neuron neuron i text style i which is also an input of the current neuron neuron j text style j alpha text style alpha the influence of the inertial term delta 
W I J T text style delta W underscore I J T in zero one text style zero one this corresponds to the weight change at the previous point in time. Inertia makes the current weight change t plus one text style t plus one depend both on the current gradient of the error function, slope of the mountain first summoned, as well as on the weight change from the previous point in time, inertia, second summoned. With inertia, the problems of getting stuck in steep ravines and flat plateaus are avoided. Since, for example, the gradient of the error function becomes very small in flat plateaus, a plateau would immediately lead to a deceleration of the gradient descent. This deceleration is delayed by the addition of the inertia term so that a flat plateau can be escaped more quickly. Topic. Modes of learning Two modes of learning are available, stochastic and batch. In stochastic learning, each input creates a weight adjustment. In batch learning weights are adjusted based on a batch of inputs, accumulating errors over the batch. Stochastic learning introduces noise into the gradient descent process, using the local gradient calculated from one data point, this reduces the chance of the network getting stuck in local minima. However, batch learning typically yields a faster, more stable descent to a local minimum, since each update is performed in the direction of the average error of the batch. A common compromise choice is to use mini batches meaning small batches and with samples in each batch selected stochastically from the entire data set topic variants topic group method of data handling The group method of data handling GMDH features fully automatic structural and parametric model optimization. The node activation functions are Kolmogorov-Gabor polynomials that permit additions and multiplications. It used a deep feedforward multilayer perceptron with eight layers. It is a supervised learning network that grows layer by layer, where each layer is trained by regression analysis. Useless items are detected using a validation set, and pruned through regularization. The size and depth of the resulting network depends on the task. Topic. Convolutional neural networks A convolutional neural network CNN is a class of deep, feed-forward networks, composed of one or more convolutional layers with fully connected layers matching those in typical artificial neural networks on top. It uses tied weights and pooling layers. In particular, max pooling is often structured via Fukushima's convolutional architecture. This architecture allows CNNs to take advantage of the 2D structure of input data. CNNs are suitable for processing visual and other two-dimensional data. They have shown superior results in both image and speech applications. They can be trained with standard backpropagation. CNNs are easier to train than other regular, deep, feed-forward neural networks and have many fewer parameters to estimate. 
Examples of applications in computer vision include DeepDream and robot navigation. A recent development has been that of Capsule Neural Network, CapsNet, the idea behind which is to add structures called capsules to a CNN and to reuse output from several of those capsules to form more stable with respect to various perturbations representations for higher order capsules. Topic: Long short-term memory. Long short-term memory (LSTM) networks are RNNs that avoid the vanishing gradient problem. LSTM is normally augmented by recurrent gates called forget gates. LSTM networks prevent backpropagated errors from vanishing or exploding. Instead errors can flow backwards through unlimited numbers of virtual layers in space unfolded LSTM. That is, LSTM can learn very deep learning tasks that require memories of events that happened thousands or even millions of discrete time steps ago. Problem-specific LSTM-like topologies can be evolved. LSTM can handle long delays and signals that have a mix of low and high frequency components. Stacks of LSTM RNNs trained by Connectionist Temporal Classification CTC can find an RNN weight matrix that maximizes the probability of the label sequences in a training set, given the corresponding input sequences. CTC achieves both alignment and recognition. In 2003, LSTM started to become competitive with traditional speech recognizers. In 2007, the combination with CTC achieved first good results on speech data. In 2009, a CTC-trained LSTM was the first RNN to win pattern recognition contests, when it won several competitions in connected handwriting recognition. In 2014, Baidu used CTC-trained RNNs to break the Switchboard Hub 5.00 speech recognition benchmark, without traditional speech processing methods. LSTM also improved large vocabulary speech recognition, text-to-speech synthesis, for Google Android, and photo real talking heads. In 2015, Google's speech recognition experienced a 49% improvement through CTC-trained LSTM. LSTM became popular in natural language processing. Unlike previous models based on HMMs and similar concepts, LSTM can learn to recognize context-sensitive languages. LSTM improved machine translation, language modeling and multilingual language processing. LSTM combined with CNN's improved automatic image captioning. Topic. Deep Reservoir Computing Deep Reservoir Computing and Deep Echo State Networks provide a framework for efficiently trained models for hierarchical processing of temporal data, while enabling the investigation of the inherent role of RNN layered composition. Topic. Deep belief networks A deep belief network DBN, is a probabilistic, generative model made up of multiple layers of hidden units. It can be considered a composition of simple learning modules that make up each layer. A DBN can be used to generatively pre train a DNN by using the learned DBN weights as the initial DNN weights. 
backpropagation or other discriminative algorithms can then tune these weights. This is particularly helpful when training data are limited, because poorly initialized weights can significantly hinder model performance. These pre-trained weights are in a region of the weight space that is closer to the optimal weights than were they randomly chosen. This allows for both improved modeling and faster convergence of the fine-tuning phase. Topic. Large memory storage and retrieval neural networks Large memory storage and retrieval neural networks are fast deep learning neural networks of many layers that can use many filters simultaneously. These filters may be nonlinear, stochastic, logic, non-stationary, or even non-analytical. They are biologically motivated and learn continuously. A LAMSTAR neural network may serve as a dynamic neural network in spatial or time domains or both. Its speed is provided by Hebbian link weights that integrate the various and usually different filters preprocessing functions into its many layers and to dynamically rank the significance of the various layers and functions relative to a given learning task. This grossly imitates biological learning which integrates various preprocessors cochlea, retina, etc. and cortexes auditory, visual, etc. and their various regions. Its deep learning capability is further enhanced by using inhibition, correlation and its ability to cope with incomplete data, or lost neurons or layers even amidst a task. It is fully transparent due to its link weights. The link weights allow dynamic determination of innovation and redundancy, and facilitate the ranking of layers, of filters or of individual neurons relative to a task. LAMSTAR has been applied to many domains, including medical and financial predictions, adaptive filtering of noisy speech in unknown noise, still image recognition, video image recognition, software security and adaptive control of nonlinear systems. LAMSTAR had a much faster learning speed and somewhat lower error rate than a CNN based on ReLU function filters and max pooling. In 20 comparative studies, these applications demonstrate delving into aspects of the data that are hidden from shallow learning networks and the human senses, such as in the cases of predicting onset of sleep apnea events, of an electrocardiogram of a a fetus is recorded from skin surface electrodes placed on the mother's abdomen early in pregnancy, of financial prediction or in blind filtering of noisy speech. LAMSTAR was proposed in 1996, a U.S. patent 5,920,852A, and was further developed Grop and Kordilevsky from 1997 to 2002. A modified version, known as LAMSTAR-2, was developed by Schneider and Gropp in 2008. Topic. Stacked denoising autoencoders The autoencoder idea is motivated by the concept of a good representation. For example, for a classifier, a good representation can be defined as one that yields a better performing classifier. An encoder is a deterministic mapping f theta display style f underscore theta that transforms an input vector x into hidden representation y, where theta equals W B 
display style theta equals bold symbol w b w display style bold symbol w is the weight matrix and b is an offset vector bias a decoder maps back the hidden representation y to the reconstructed input z via g theta display style g underscore theta the whole process of autoencoding is to compare this reconstructed input to the original and try to minimize the error to make the reconstructed value as close as possible to the original in stacked denoising autoencoders, the partially corrupted output is cleaned denoised. This idea was introduced in 2010 by Vincent et al. with a specific approach to good representation. A good representation is one that can be obtained robustly from a corrupted input and that will be useful for recovering the corresponding clean input. Implicit in this definition are the following ideas. The higher level representations are relatively stable and robust to input corruption. It is necessary to extract features that are useful for representation of the input distribution. The algorithm starts by a stochastic mapping of x display style bold symbol x to x tilde display style tilde bold symbol x through q d x tilde x Display style q underscore d tilde bold symbol x bold symbol x. This is the corrupting step. Then the corrupted input x tilde display style tilde bold symbol x passes through a basic autoencoder process and is mapped to a hidden representation. Y equals F theta X tilde equals S W X tilde plus B Display style bold symbol y equals f underscore theta tilde bold symbol x equals s bold symbol w tilde bold symbol x plus b. From this hidden representation, we can reconstruct z equals g theta y. Display style bold symbol z equals g underscore theta bold symbol y. In the last stage, a minimization algorithm runs in order to have z as close as possible to uncorrupted input x. Display style bold symbol x. The reconstruction error l h x z display style l underscore h bold symbol x bold symbol z might be either the cross entropy loss with an affine sigmoid decoder or the squared error loss with an affine decoder in order to make a deep architecture auto encoders stack once the encoding function f theta display style f underscore theta 
of the first denoising autoencoder is learned and used to uncorrupt the input, corrupted input. The second level can be trained. Once the stacked autoencoder is trained, its output can be used as the input to a supervised learning algorithm such as support vector machine classifier or a multi-class logistic regression. Topic. Deep stacking networks A deep stacking network DSN, deep convex network, is based on a hierarchy of blocks of simplified neural network modules. It was introduced in 2011 by Dang and Dong. It formulates the learning as a convex optimization problem with a closed form solution, emphasizing the mechanism's similarity to stacked generalization. Each DSN block is a simple module that is easy to train by itself in a supervised fashion without backpropagation for the entire blocks. Each block consists of a simplified multi-layer perceptron MLP with a single hidden layer. The hidden layer H has logistic sigmoidal units, and the output layer has linear units. Connections between these layers are represented by weight matrix U. Input to hidden layer connections have weight matrix W. Target vectors T form the columns of matrix T, and the input data vectors X form the columns of matrix X. The matrix of hidden units is H equals sigma W. T X display style bold symbol H equals sigma bold symbol W caret T bold symbol X. Modules are trained in order, so lower layer weights W are known at each stage. The function performs the element-wise logistic sigmoid operation. Each block estimates the same final label class Y, and its estimate is concatenated with original input X to form the expanded input for the next block. Thus, the input to the first block contains the original data only, while downstream block's input adds the output of preceding blocks. Then learning the upper layer weight matrix U given other weights in the network can be formulated as a convex optimization problem. Min U T F equals U T H minus T F two display style min underscore u caret t f equals bold symbol u caret t bold symbol h bold symbol t underscore f caret two, which has a closed form solution. Unlike other deep architectures, such as DBNs, the goal is not to discover the transformed feature representation. The structure of the hierarchy of this kind of architecture makes parallel learning straightforward, as a batch mode optimization problem. In purely discriminative tasks, DSNs perform better than conventional DBNs. Topic. Tensor deep stacking networks This architecture is a DSN extension. It offers two important improvements, it uses higher order information from covariance statistics, and it transforms the non-convex problem of a lower layer to a convex sub-problem of an upper layer. TDSNs use covariance statistics in a bilinear mapping from each of two distinct sets of hidden units in the same layer to predictions, via a third-order tensor. 
while parallelization and scalability are not considered seriously in conventional DNNs, all learning for DSNs and TDSNs is done in batch mode, to allow parallelization. Parallelization allows scaling the design to larger deeper architectures and datasets. The basic architecture is suitable for diverse tasks such as classification and regression. Topic: Spike and slab RBMs. The need for deep learning with real valued inputs, as in Gaussian restricted Boltzmann machines, led to the spike and slab RBM SSRBM, which models continuous valued inputs with strictly binary latent variables. Similar to basic RBMs and its variants, a spike and slab RBM is a bipartite graph, while like GRBMs, the visible units input are real valued. The difference is in the hidden layer, where each hidden unit has a binary spike variable and a real valued slab variable. A spike is a discrete probability mass at zero, while a slab is a density over continuous domain, their mixture forms a prior, an extension of SSRBM called micro-SSRBM provides extra modeling capacity using additional terms in the energy function. One of these terms enables the model to form a conditional distribution of the spike variables by marginalizing out the slab variables given an observation. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Compound hierarchical deep models. Compound hierarchical deep models compose deep networks with non-parametric Bayesian models. Features can be learned using deep architectures such as DBNs, DBMs, deep autoencoders, convolutional variants, SSRBMs, deep coding networks, DBNs with sparse feature learning, RNNs, conditional DBNs, denoising autoencoders. This provides a better representation, allowing faster learning and more accurate classification with high-dimensional data. However, these architectures are poor at learning novel classes with few examples, because all network units are involved in representing the input a distributed representation and must be adjusted together high degree of freedom. Limiting the degree of freedom reduces the number of parameters to learn, facilitating learning of new classes from few examples. Hierarchical Bayesian HB models allow learning from few examples, for example for computer vision, statistics and cognitive science. Compound HD architectures aim to integrate characteristics of both HB and deep networks. The compound HDPDBM architecture is a hierarchical Dirichlet process HDP as a hierarchical model, incorporated with DBM architecture. It is a full generative model, generalized from abstract concepts flowing through the layers of the model, which is able to synthesize new examples in novel classes that look reasonably natural. All the levels are learned jointly by maximizing a joint log probability score. In a DBM with three hidden layers, the probability of a visible input new is P new psi equals one Z H E I J W I J one new I H J 
1 plus j l w j l 2 h j 1 h l 2 plus l m w l m 3 h l 2 h m 3 Display style p bold symbol new psi equals frac one z sum underscore h e caret sum underscore i j w underscore i j caret one new underscore i h underscore j caret one plus sum underscore j l w underscore j l caret two h underscore j caret Carrot one H underscore L carrot two plus some underscore L M W underscore L M carrot three H underscore L carrot two H underscore M carrot three where H equals H one H two H three Display style bold symbol H equals bold symbol H carrot one bold symbol H carrot two bold symbol H carrot three is the set of hidden units and psi equals W one W Two W three Display style psi equals bold symbol W carrot one bold symbol W carrot two bold symbol W carrot three are the model parameters representing visible hidden and hidden hidden symmetric interaction terms. A learned DBM model is an undirected model that defines the joint distribution P nu H one H two H three Display style P nu H carrot one H carrot two H carrot three one way to express what has been learned is the conditional model P nu H one H two H three Display style P nu H carrot one H carrot two H carrot three and a prior term p h 3 display style p h caret 3 here p new h 1 h 2 h 3 Display style P new H carrot one H carrot two H carrot three represents a conditional DBM model, which can be viewed as a two layer DBM but with bias terms given by the states of H three Display style H carrot three P new H one H two H three equals one 
Z Psi H three E I J W I J one New I H J one plus J L W J L two H J one H L two plus L M W L M three H L two H M three Display style P new H carrot one H carrot two H carrot three equals FRAC one Z psi H carrot three E carrot sum underscore I J W underscore I J carrot one new underscore I H underscore J carrot one plus sum underscore J L W underscore J L carrot Two H underscore J carrot one H underscore L carrot two plus some underscore L M W underscore L M carrot three H underscore L carrot two H underscore M carrot three. Topic Deep Predictive Coding Networks A deep predictive coding network DPCN, is a predictive coding scheme that uses top-down information to empirically adjust the priors needed for a bottom-up inference procedure by means of a deep, locally connected, generative model. This works by extracting sparse features from time-varying observations using a linear dynamical model. Then, a pooling strategy is used to learn invariant feature representations. These units compose to form a deep architecture and are trained by greedy layer-wise unsupervised learning. The layers constitute a kind of Markov chain such that the states at any layer depend only on the preceding and succeeding layers. DPCNs predict the representation of the layer, by using a top-down approach using the information in upper layer and temporal dependencies from previous states, DPCNs can be extended to form a convolutional network. Topic. Networks with separate memory structures Integrating external memory with artificial neural networks dates to early research in distributed representations and Cajonan's self-organizing maps. For example, in sparse distributed memory or hierarchical temporal memory, the patterns encoded by neural networks are used as addresses for content-addressable memory, with neurons essentially serving as address encoders and decoders. However, the early controllers of such memories were not differentiable. <laughs> LSTM-related differentiable memory structures Apart from long short-term memory LSTM, other approaches also added differentiable memory to recurrent functions. For example, differentiable push and pop actions for alternative memory networks called neural stack machines 
memory networks where the control network's external differentiable storage is in the fast weights of another network LSTM for GET gates Self-referential RNNs with special output units for addressing and rapidly manipulating the RNN's own weights in differentiable fashion internal storage Learning to transduce with unbounded memory Topic. Neural Turing machines Neural Turing machines couple LSTM networks to external memory resources, with which they can interact by attentional processes. The combined system is analogous to a Turing machine but is differentiable end-to-end, -end, allowing it to be efficiently trained by gradient descent. Preliminary results demonstrate that neural Turing machines can infer simple algorithms such as copying, sorting and associative recall from input and output examples. Differentiable Neural Computers DNC, are an NTM extension. They outperformed neural Turing machines, long short-term memory systems and memory networks on sequence processing tasks. Topic. Semantic hashing Approaches that represent previous experiences directly and use a similar experience to form a local model are often called nearest neighbor or k-nearest neighbors methods. Deep learning is useful in semantic hashing where a deep graphical model the word count vectors obtained from a large set of documents. Documents are mapped to memory addresses in such a way that semantically similar documents are located at nearby addresses. Documents similar to a query document can then be found by accessing all the addresses that differ by only a few bits from the address of the query document. Unlike sparse distributed memory that operates on 1,000-bit addresses, semantic hashing works on 32 or 64-bit addresses found in a conventional computer architecture. Topic. Memory networks Memory networks are another extension to neural networks incorporating long-term memory. The long-term memory can be read and written to, with the goal of using it for prediction. These models have been applied in the context of question answering QA, where the long-term memory effectively acts as a dynamic knowledge base and the output as a textual response. A team of electrical and computer engineers from UCLA Samueli School of Engineering has created a physical artificial neural network that can analyze large volumes of data and identify objects at the actual speed of light. Topic: <laughs> Pointer networks. Deep neural networks can be potentially improved by deepening and parameter reduction, while maintaining trainability. While training extremely deep e one million layers, neural networks might not be practical, CPU-like architectures such as pointer networks and neural random access machines overcome this limitation by using external random access memory and other components that typically belong to a computer architecture such as registers, ALU and pointers. Such systems operate on probability distribution vectors stored in memory cells and registers. Thus, the model is fully differentiable and trains end-to-end. -end. 
The key characteristic of these models is that their depth, the size of their short-term memory, and the number of parameters can be altered independently, unlike models like LSTM, whose number of parameters grows quadratically with memory size. Topic. Encoder decoder networks Encoder decoder frameworks are based on neural networks that map highly structured input to highly structured output. The approach arose in the context of machine translation, where the input and output are written sentences in two natural languages. In that work, an LSTM RNN or CNN was used as an encoder to summarize a source sentence, and the summary was decoded using a conditional RNN language model to produce the translation. These systems share building blocks, gated RNNs and CNNs and trained attention mechanisms. Topic. Multilayer kernel machine Multilayer kernel machines MKM, are a way of learning highly nonlinear functions by iterative application of weakly nonlinear kernels. They use the kernel principal component analysis KPCA, as a method for the unsupervised greedy layer-wise pre-training step of deep learning, layer L plus 1 display style L plus 1 learns the representation of the previous layer L display style l extracting the n l display style n underscore l principal component pc of the projection layer l display style l output in the feature domain induced by the kernel for the sake of dimensionality reduction of the updated representation in each layer, a supervised strategy selects the best informative features among features extracted by KPCA. The process is rank the n l display style n underscore l features according to their mutual information with the class labels for different values of k and m l element of 1 n l display style m underscore l in 1 l dots n underscore l Compute the classification error rate of a k nearest neighbor k n n classifier using only the m l display style m underscore l most informative features on a validation set. The value of m l display style m underscore l with which the classifier has reached the lowest error rate determines the number of features to retain some drawbacks accompany the kpca method as the building cells of an mkm a more straightforward way to use kernel machines for deep learning was developed for spoken language understanding the main idea is to use a kernel machine to approximate a shallow neural net with an infinite number of hidden units, then use stacking to splice the output of the kernel machine and the raw input in building the next, higher level of the kernel machine. The number of levels in the deep convex network is a hyperparameter of the overall system, to be determined by cross-validation. Topic. 
Neural architecture search Neural Architecture Search uses machine learning to automate the design of artificial neural networks. Various approaches to NAS have designed networks that compare well with hand-designed systems. The basic search algorithm is to propose a candidate model, evaluate it against a dataset and use the results as feedback to teach the NAS network. Use Using artificial neural networks requires an understanding of their characteristics. Choice of model, this depends on the data representation and the application. Overly complex models slow learning. Learning algorithm, numerous trade-offs exist between learning algorithms. Almost any algorithm will work well with the correct hyperparameters for training on a particular data set. However, selecting and tuning an algorithm for training on unseen data requires significant experimentation. Robustness, if the model, cost function and learning algorithm are selected appropriately, the resulting AN can become robust. AN capabilities fall within the following broad categories. Function approximation, or regression analysis, including time series prediction, fitness approximation and modeling. Classification, including pattern and sequence recognition, novelty detection and sequential decision-making. Data processing, including filtering, clustering, blind source separation and compression. Robotics, including directing manipulators and prostheses. Control, including computer numerical control. Topic. Applications Because of their ability to reproduce and model nonlinear processes, artificial neural networks have found many applications in a wide range of disciplines. Application areas include system identification and control, vehicle control, trajectory prediction, process control, natural resource management, quantum chemistry, general game playing, pattern recognition, radar systems, face identification, signal classification, 3D reconstruction, object recognition and more, sequence recognition, gesture, speech, handwritten and printed text recognition, medical diagnosis, finance, e.g. automated trading systems, data mining, visualization, machine translation, social network filtering and email spam filtering. Artificial neural networks have been used to diagnose cancers, including lung cancer, prostate cancer, colorectal cancer and to distinguish highly invasive cancer cell lines from less invasive lines using only cell shape information. Artificial neural networks have been used to accelerate reliability analysis of infrastructures subject to natural disasters and to predict foundation settlements. Artificial neural networks have also been used for building black box models in geo science, hydrology, ocean modeling and coastal engineering, and geomorphology. Artificial neural networks have been employed with some success also in cybersecurity, with the objective to discriminate between legitimate activities and malicious ones. For example, machine learning has been used for classifying Android malware, for identifying domains belonging to threat actors and for detecting URLs posing a security risk. 
Research is being carried out also on AND systems designed for penetration testing, for detecting botnets, credit cards frauds, network intrusions and, more in general, potentially infected machines. Topic. Types of models Many types of models are used, defined at different levels of abstraction and modeling different aspects of neural systems. They range from models of the short-term behavior of individual neurons, models of how the dynamics of neural circuitry arise from interactions between individual neurons and finally to models of how behavior can arise from abstract neural modules that represent complete subsystems. These include models of the long-term, and short-term plasticity, of neural systems and their relations to learning and memory from the individual neuron to the system level. Theoretical properties Computational power The multilayer perceptron is a universal function approximator, as proven by the universal approximation theorem. However, the proof is not constructive regarding the number of neurons required, the network topology, the weights and the learning parameters. A specific recurrent architecture with rational valued weights as opposed to full precision real number valued weights has the full power of a universal Turing machine, using a finite number of neurons and standard linear connections. Further, the use of irrational values for weights results in a machine with super Turing power. Topic. Capacity Models' capacity property roughly corresponds to their ability to model any given function. It is related to the amount of information that can be stored in the network and to the notion of complexity. Topic. Convergence. Models may not consistently converge on a single solution, firstly because many local minima may exist, depending on the cost function and the model. Secondly, the optimization method used might not guarantee to converge when it begins far from any local minimum. Thirdly, for sufficiently large data or parameters, some methods become impractical. However, for CMAC neural network, a recursive least squares algorithm was introduced to train it, and this algorithm can be guaranteed to converge in one step. Topic: <laughs> Generalization and statistics. Applications whose goal is to create a system that generalizes well to unseen examples, face the possibility of overtraining. This arises in convoluted or over-specified systems when the capacity of the network significantly exceeds the needed free parameters. Two approaches address overtraining. The first is to use cross-validation and similar techniques to check for the presence of overtraining and optimally select hyperparameters to minimize the generalization error. The second is to use some form of regularization. 
This concept emerges in a probabilistic Bayesian framework, where regularization can be performed by selecting a larger prior probability over simpler models, but also in statistical learning theory, where the goal is to minimize over two quantities, the empirical risk and the structural risk, which roughly corresponds to the error over the training set and the predicted error in unseen data due to overfitting. Supervised neural networks that use a mean squared error MSE cost function can use formal statistical methods to determine the confidence of the trained model. The MSE on a validation set can be used as an estimate for variance. This value can then be used to calculate the confidence interval of the output of the network, assuming a normal distribution. A confidence analysis made this way is statistically valid as long as the output probability distribution stays the same and the network is not modified. By assigning a softmax activation function, a generalization of the logistic function, on the output layer of the neural network or a softmax component in a component-based neural network for categorical target variables, the outputs can be interpreted as posterior probabilities. This is very useful in classification as it gives a certainty measure on classifications. The softmax activation function is y i equals e x i j equals 1 c e x j Display style y underscore i equals frac e caret x underscore i sum underscore j equals one caret c e caret x underscore j. Topic criticism. Topic. Training issues A common criticism of neural networks, particularly in robotics, is that they require too much training for real-world operation. Potential solutions include randomly shuffling training examples, by using a numerical optimization algorithm that does not take too large steps when changing the network connections following an example and by grouping examples in so-called mini-batches. Improving the training efficiency and convergence capability has always been an ongoing research area for neural network. For example, by introducing a recursive least squares algorithm for CMAC neural network, the training process only takes one step to converge. Topic: <laughs> Theoretical issues. A fundamental objection is that they do not reflect how real neurons function. Back propagation is a critical part of most artificial neural networks, although no such mechanism exists in biological neural networks. How information is coded by real neurons is not known. Sensor neurons fire action potentials more frequently with sensor activation and muscle cells pull more strongly when their associated motor neurons receive action potentials more frequently. Other than the case of relaying information from a sensor neuron to a motor neuron, almost nothing of the principles of how information is handled by biological neural networks is known. This is a subject of active research in neural coding. The motivation behind artificial neural networks is not necessarily to strictly replicate neural function, but to use biological neural networks as an inspiration. 
A central claim of artificial neural networks is therefore that it embodies some new and powerful general principle for processing information. Unfortunately, these general principles are ill-defined. It is often claimed that they are emergent from the network itself. This allows simple statistical association the basic function of artificial neural networks to be described as learning or recognition. Alexander Dudney commented that, as a result, artificial neural networks have a something-for-nothing quality, one that imparts a peculiar aura of laziness and a distinct lack of curiosity about just how good these computing systems are. No human hand or mind intervenes, solutions are found as if by magic, and no one, it seems, has learned anything. Biological brains use both shallow and deep circuits as reported by brain anatomy, displaying a wide variety of invariants. Wang argued that the brain self wires largely according to signal statistics and therefore, a serial cascade cannot catch all major statistical dependencies. Hardware issues Large and effective neural networks require considerable computing resources. While the brain has hardware tailored to the task of processing signals through a graph of neurons, simulating even a simplified neuron on von Neumann architecture may compel a neural network designer to fill many millions of database rows for its connections, which can consume vast amounts of memory and storage. Furthermore, the designer often needs to transmit signals through many of these connections and their associated neurons, which must often be matched with enormous CPU processing power and time. Schmidhuber notes that the resurgence of neural networks in the 21st century is largely attributable to advances in hardware. From 1991 to 2015, computing power, especially as delivered by GPGPUs on GPUs, has increased around a million fold, making the standard backpropagation algorithm feasible for training networks that are several layers deeper than before. The use of accelerators such as FPGAs and GPUs can reduce training times from months to days. Neuromorphic engineering addresses the hardware difficulty directly, by constructing non von Neumann chips to directly implement neural networks in circuitry. Another chip optimized for neural network processing is called a tensor processing unit, or TPU. Topic. Practical counterexamples to criticisms Arguments against Dudney's position are that neural networks have been successfully used to solve many complex and diverse tasks, ranging from autonomously flying aircraft to detecting credit card fraud to mastering the game of Go. Technology writer Roger Bridgman commented, Neural networks, for instance, are in the dock not only because they have been hyped to high heaven, what hasn't, but also because you could create a successful net without understanding how it worked. The bunch of numbers that captures its behavior would in all probability be an opaque, unreadable table, valueless as a scientific resource. In spite of his emphatic declaration that science is not technology, Dudney seems here to pillory neural nets as bad science when most of those devising them are just trying to be good engineers. An unreadable table that a useful machine could read would still be well worth having. 
Although it is true that analyzing what has been learned by an artificial neural network is difficult, it is much easier to do so than to analyze what has been learned by a biological neural network. Furthermore, researchers involved in exploring learning algorithms for neural networks are gradually uncovering general principles that allow a learning machine to be successful. For example, local versus non-local learning and shallow versus deep architecture. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Hybrid approaches. Advocates of hybrid models combining neural networks and symbolic approaches claim that such a mixture can better capture the mechanisms of the human mind. Topic. Types Artificial neural networks have many variations. The simplest, static types have one or more static components, including number of units, number of layers, unit weights and topology. Dynamic types allow one or more of these to change during the learning process. The latter are much more complicated, but can shorten learning periods and produce better results. Some types allow, require learning to be supervised by the operator, while others operate independently. Some types operate purely in hardware, while others are purely software and run on general purpose computers. Topic Gallery equals equals see also